I want to speak on this alleged preacher by the name of Mike Todd. It's a video that's circulating around social media. Now, I've noticed this a few days ago, but just kind of ignored it because I thought that this was another uh, one of those videos that's coming out of Africa where you see these preachers doing crazy things and making their church members do crazy things. So I decided to watch it because I kept seeing it on my timeline. And people was making a big deal out of it. So I sat there and I watched that video. It's extremely disgusting. It's extremely demonic. And some people may not look at it as demonic. But when you have someone that's in the role of a spiritual leader, a pastor over a church, it's interesting how they can take the word of God and distort it to make people believe that God told them to allow them to hop from the pit of their stomach phlegm and mucus spit in their hands and then just wipe it all over your face. Now, another video circulated where he had done that in the past. So this is not the first time that this Mike Todd had done that using the same man. So apparently this is some type of gimmick to gross people out. And he used the scripture in the Bible to justify that. Now I listen to some other preachers and there's other preachers that justify what he did. And I even heard a preacher say, um, I do the same thing. Well, I've always had an issue against that in the church. Even when preachers tell the members to look at their neighbor and then say things and want them to repeat that to their neighbor. Most people don't think about what he's telling you to say. And in many times, you're actually cursing that individual. Neighbor, oh neighbor, you're going to get yours. And they just leave it blank like that. So in the mind of the person that's saying that, what's their subconscious motive and thought process when they repeated that to somebody that they might have had a disagreement with in the past. So you have to really be careful what you say. You can speak life and death in your tongue. The Bible says life or death is in the power of the tongue. You can speak life or you can speak death. And in many occasions, preachers speak death while making it sound and appear to be life. But you err by not knowing the scriptures, nor the power thereof. And because you don't know the scriptures, because you don't study, because you cling to every word that someone with the title or preacher or evangelist or pastor says, because you cling to those words, it's easy for you to be deceived and manipulated. And there's people that still follow this wolf in sheep clothing that call himself Pastor Mike Todd. Now, I'm going to read a scripture to you, the same scripture that he was referencing while hawking and spitting and putting phlegm on this man's face. I'm going to give you insight to what was really happening in the Bible when Jesus did this. Now, I recall growing up, sometimes your parent would probably lick their fingers and 
kind of rub your eyes to get the, the crust out of your eyes or something to that effect. They didn't hawk and spit in their hands. They just kind of wet their fingers and did it. It's still nasty. If you really think about it, it's still nasty. All right? Because they could have just easily went to, the, went to the kitchen or the bathroom and got some water and a washcloth and wiped your face. But instead, they chose to use their spit. Right. And then you have women that do that to men. And because that man is so in love and whipped, they allow that to happen and vice versa. But I'm going to read a scripture and then I'm going to let you listen to the alleged apology of this wolf in sheep clothing. I'm going to read a scripture taken from the book of John, the ninth chapter, reading the first to the 11th verse. And it reads as follow. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now, this is the question that many people ask today. When they see misfortune happen in someone's life, one of the first questions they ask is, what did they do or what sin did they do in their life to cause this unfortunate incident to occur to them? And in many cases, they didn't sin. They didn't do nothing. It's just things that happen in life. See, the Most High allows the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust. See, so you don't have to do anything wrong for misfortune to happen in your life. The third verse reads, Jesus answered, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. So sometimes people are born with a condition so that some, at some place and time in their life, God can make it so that they can receive their healing to manifest his power. Now, does that happen in this time period? We have not seen it because in my own personal belief, there's so much corruption and disbelief that God is not able to work. It's almost like God's hands are tied. And I recall a scripture where Jesus said that there's, he couldn't do many miracles in his time because of their unbelief. They watched him grow up. They knew who he was. Just like in this day and time, you know someone from your own neighborhood. And then the next day you hear they're, they're, they're a preacher or they're a prophet or claiming to be a prophet. And the first thought that's going to come to your mind is what they did while they were growing up. You're going to always focus on the negative. But again, there are those people that use the word of God for ill-gotten gain. For power, for deception. And this is the case of this Mike Todd. I'm not even going to refer to him as a pastor. The fourth verse reads, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Now, keep in mind, I'm sure he did not hawk and spit. He did not go into his chest to pull up phlegm. But the Bible says when he had thus, spit, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. So in other words, he took the spit from his mouth, he spit on the ground and made clay made mud. And the Bible says he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. 
I'm going to read that sixth verse again. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the, the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sent. He, the man, went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Now, that's the result of Jesus. God ordained instructions. That's the result of God's instruction. God's ordained instructions was that that man end up seeing. So it wasn't done just to perform or just to humiliate somebody, humiliate someone. But he spit on the ground, made mud, anointed the man's eyes with the mud, not with phlegm. And he told the man to go wash the mud off his face. And he gave him specific instructions to go to the pool of Shalom, which is interpreted, sent. And after this man did the instructions of Jesus, well, I'm going to read the scripture and let you see for yourself. The seventh verse says, And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. The eighth verse says, The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. The tenth verse reads, Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? In other words, How were you made to see? And he answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Shalom and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. So the spit or the thumb of Mike Todd is not anointed. That's unholy phlegm. Now, I'm going to let you listen to the so-called or alleged apology of Mike Todd. And in my own personal opinion, it's not genuine. You can see uh, the satanic influence in him. He's influenced by the devil. And he's making mockery of the church. And he's making mockery of the ignorance of the people in the church. I'm not even going to say that they're people of Yah. These are ignorant people in the church that's willing to follow anything and anybody that comes along with the gimmick. And not to be political, but that's why we see black Democrats are easily taken advantage of. And the only time the Democratic politicians come around is when they want to use black people for their own ill-gotten agenda. And black people fall for it every single time because they were conditioned to support the demon crap party. But I guarantee you that most of the congregation of Mike Todd are Democrats. I almost guarantee you they are Democrats. Because no one in their sound mind will sit back and watch this happen. It's filthy. There's people that couldn't even watch it. That's how disgusting it was. And his apology or alleged apology sound like a joke to him. He was laughing. 
But I'm going to let you listen to his so-called apology. Listen for yourself. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I hope you're having an amazing Monday. I just want to acknowledge uh, what happened yesterday when the spit hit the fan. I watched it back, and um, it was disgusting. <laughs> like, that was gross. I want to validate everybody's feelings. Um, that that was a distraction to what I was really trying to do. I was really trying to make the word come alive and for people to see the story. But yesterday it got too live, and I own that. And um, I just want to make sure people know that we want to help people. We want people to see Jesus. We want people to feel loved. We want people who are desperate to be able to find hope. And I'm passionate about that so much so that I try to do extreme things to help people get it. And yesterday it crossed the line. So um, I love you guys. I appreciate everybody that's been praying for us and sending us messages. And to anybody who just saw that three-minute clip, I really encourage you to go back and watch the whole message. There's some truth and some life in there that could potentially change your whole life. Um, when Jesus uh, spit on that man, he was blind and then he could see. Um, for my brother who I love and uh, honor so much, I just called him. He was bald before I spit on him, and he's still bald today. So no miracle here, and uh, so next time I'll rethink and do something differently. I love everybody. I'm praying for everybody, and uh, Transformation Nation, thank you for writing. We're going to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. All right? Everybody, have an amazing week. Peace. Now, I want to show you the distortion of the devil. He said in his alleged apology that Jesus spit on the man. And make note of this. He said Jesus spit on the man. From the scripture I read, it said that Jesus spit on the ground. And he made some mud. And he anointed the man's eyes with the mixture of the ground, the earth, and his spittle. He did not hawk and cough up phlegm and plaster it on that man's face. Yeshua did not do that. And that goes back to what I said about you error by not knowing the scriptures nor the power thereof. So Jesus did not spit on that man. He spit on the ground. And he made mud and anointed the man's eyes with the mud and then told the man, to go to the pool of Shalom and wash. And because the man was obedient to Christ, the man was able to see. So this was no more than a distortion of the word of God. And the only people that were deceived are those that don't know the word. You error by not knowing the scriptures, nor the power thereof. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.